This is a standard 38 millimeter eBay Turbo. And we're going to go over what you guys need to do to bulletproof this guy. Go ahead and start by removing the upper ring with your spanner wrench. Remove the upper half and a dressing nut. Remove your spring. Next, we have access to our diaphragm. We need to remove this diaphragm. There's three Allen head keys. Go ahead and remove those. All right, now that we have all three of the set screws out, you're gonna need to take a razor blade and carefully pry the diaphragm away from the edge of the housing so that we can remove the entire diaphragm assembly. Once you get the lip started, you can just use your finger and it will lift right out. There's no sort of glue or adhesive holding this in here. Okay, once that's done, we will go ahead and remove the entire assembly straight off the top. Here's what it looks like. You can see the three holes for the set screws. And they actually bottom out against that shaft right there. Now the whole problem <clears throat> with these wastegates is actually right here. These three screws. They will actually vibrate loose internally and your wastegate will fall apart as you drive and you will over boost or lose all boost. Um, so let's go ahead and get that fixed. Go ahead and remove those three Allen head screws. Here's your upper half of your wastegate, your lower half. You get three spacers. You have a base plate. It's used mainly for heat transfer and deflection. And there it is. There's a completely disassembled eBay wastegate. A wastegate is a very simple piece and there's nothing wrong with using a cheap one as long as we go through and make sure the damn thing's not going to rattle apart. You've seen the basics of the wastegate. Go ahead and lock tight all your bolts and put this thing back together. Pretty simple. Put the shaft back up for the housing, set down your base plate, set down your spacer washers over the threaded holes, drop the bottom of your wastegate on, it will automatically align everything. Once the wastegate's lined up, we can go ahead and get our diaphragm put back inside of here. The way this diaphragm seals is on a compression basis. So as long as this gets tightened down all the way, it's going to compress and seal inside this groove. That's why we don't need any sealant or glue along the perimeter of the diaphragm. So as you can see, the diaphragm will simply go in and then press it up inside that hole there. You can see we can focus this You can see the metal inside there with that little lip. So we went ahead and bottomed out the shaft. We go ahead and put Loctite on those screws and tighten them down against the shaft. All right, you guys. You can see the Loctite pouring out of those guys. They're all in there. The diaphragm will almost set itself completely back in place. 
all you got to do is just kind of run your fingernail along the edge here and press it down in the groove. Okay. Spring. Put the top on. Tighten the nut down. All right, one last thing I wanted to go over. If you see the bottom plunger there, see how we have a light coming through down there? That means we don't have a seal. If you install this the way it sits, you're going to have boost issues because you're leaking around this plunger. It's not a design flaw. They actually have this ring that goes in there and it's chamfered with a 45 degree angle as is the plunger assembly. So it acts just like a valve in a seat. And this keeps it from prematurely wearing out. If you set it on there, when you bolt this down, it slightly compresses against your spring and gives you a perfect seal. It acts just like a valve spring inside of a car. But that's it. That's how you bolt it proof an eBay turbo. Good luck with your builds.